Tom Closer is uh, able to join us. Uh, and uh, Tom, very good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Wilford. Hi, Wilford. How are you today? Pretty good. Pretty good, thank you. So what, what is your sort of medium to short-term short uh, outlook, uh, given uh, summer demand pickups and, and the sort of odd, odd uh, activity we've seen in the last month? You know, I think we're going to see higher prices this weekend, Memorial Day weekend, than we're going to see Father's Day or July 4th. Uh, what I'm worried about is where the prices are in July and August, because we do have a problem in the supply chain with not enough drivers. Uh, we know what happens when we have hurricanes, and there is a propensity for crowd behavior that's a little bit unruly or unreasonable that I think should frighten everybody this year. So uh, a good start to the driving season. Be aware that there's a lot of cheerleading on Wall Street about how boisterous people are going to be out there and so forth. It's a little bit of a false start. Uh, you know, we probably get a little give back in prices in June, but then July and August could be problematic. What about the supply side? On the supply side, you know, measured against we're in pretty decent shape, unless we go up and break the records that we set from 2016 to 2019 for gasoline demand. You know, we normally use about 400 million gallons a day or, you know, somewhere in the mid nine billion barrels a day. And uh, we're okay with that as long as we don't get an interruption. Refiners have extra gasoline in their pocket in terms of extra production. Uh, but if people re regard this like they did toilet paper and they start uh, acting with what I call petronoia, then we've got problems. So I'm really worried about the behavioral aspect more than I'm worried about the price of crude or more than I'm worried about typical supply and demand. Tom, what about the six-day closure of the Colonial Pipeline? Are we, are we totally through that? And have there been any important lessons learned to prevent something like that happening? Uh, we'll see if the lessons are learned. I mean, you know, they're having some IT issues today in terms of making nominations on the pipeline. It's an incredible artery uh, for the east part of the country. I would say that we've caught up in most of those places, and a lot of the places served by Colonial Pipeline in the southeast uh, probably are the places that are most likely to see lower prices in June. But then in July and August, again, an early hurricane has dramatic consequences this year. Tom, does the size of the fiscal package that gets passed by the Biden administration uh, impact oil prices for the rest of the, this year? Is that, is that a big swing factor? Uh, I'm not so sure. I, I mean, there's some winds and the macro winds have suggested for a long time that maybe go up to above $70. Certainly Goldman Sachs has their $80 call. There was a bank today that was suggesting $100 in a few years because of the ESG concerns and, and the decarbonization of, uh, of the fuel we use. I think, and I hate to say this because it's anathema, we're kind of fairly valued right now on the crude oil side, maybe a little bit high on gasoline, and probably a little bit too much speculative money on in crude oil, gasoline, and diesel at the moment. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.